This is how you reach the troops on the front lines in Afghanistan, a country full of rugged terrain and hostile insurgents. We're the link between them and the rest of civilization. We, we take care of every need they have. We get it to them on time anywhere. The flying lifeline. The flying lifeline, absolutely. That lifeline is made up largely of Air National Guardsmen from Rhode Island, California, and Maryland, including Major Mark Janai from Loudoun County. He's preparing this C-130 at Bagram Airfield for a mission to Kandahar about two hours away. Especially to the troops on the ground when you're talking about food, water, bullets, and they don't have anything else, you know. The, the war comes to a stop for them. When you're talking about dropping stuff out of an airplane, how do you get it onto the ground safely? Well, first there's a parachute up there, and then this material down here collapses when the cargo hits the ground, so everything gets there intact. And on target, the unit says they can put a plane load of cargo on the ground within 25 yards of the intended drop site. But before the plane takes off, Baltimore resident Master Sergeant Steve Pargan comes through to make sure everything is where it needs to be. Now that we're up in the air, the mission itself is pretty simple. We're going to fly somewhere outside of Kandahar. When we get to the drop zone, that's when they release the cargo. Simple, yes, but there's still danger. The crew knows insurgents are active in the area and, if given the chance, would have no problem opening fire on this airplane. Other aircraft have, have been engaged by the, the bad guys. So getting in and out quickly is key. The drop takes just seconds, and the 21,500 pounds of supplies are on their way to the troops on the ground. And this crew is headed back to reload the plane and do it all over again. Flying over Kandahar, Afghanistan, Chris Van Cleve, ABC 7 News. Blessed reads the word etched on Lance Corporal John Wilder's wrist. And blessed he certainly seems to be. <laughs> I'm pretty lucky. I wouldn't call it luck, but someone's looking at them. Just seven days earlier, on patrol in Afghanistan, this 20 year old Marine ended up on top of an IED. No, I had no clue I stepped on it. I was actually standing there and I was bent over, and as I was coming back up, the blast went off. Next thing he remembers was waking up at a field hospital, staying only long enough for what's dubbed damage control treatment. From there, the wounded come by chopper and often by the plane load. Special air evac missions fly into the battle zones across Afghanistan, picking up stretcher after stretcher of the wounded and delivering them to one of a handful of trauma centers, including the Craig Joint Theater Hospital at Bagram Airfield. This past Sunday, we saw 14 to 15 trauma patients in a 24-hour time period, so it stays pretty busy. Dr. Brandon Snook is a general surgeon here. He says the bulk of the injuries are gunshots or similar to this Marine, whose legs were shattered by an improvised explosive device. It's not just coalition troops that get treated here. It's also Afghan National Police, Afghan National Army, civilians, and on occasion, even enemy combatants. In fact, doctors recently donned body armor to operate on an Afghan soldier with an explosive round lodged in his skull, risking their lives to save his. They got it out. An impressive example of why this hospital claims a nearly 99% survival rate. And while even this team can't explain how Lance Corporal Wilder escaped that IED blast with just a small piece of shrapnel in his neck, a concussion, and some hearing loss. This is really a blessing to be here. John thinks he knows. My mom gave me some prayer cloths before I came out here, and I carried those with me everywhere I went on every patrol, and I think that's what did it for me. A mother's prayer. Uh, Psalms 91, no harm will come nigh thee. Proving more powerful than an insurgent's bomb. From Bagram Airfield, Afghanistan, Chris Van Cleve. ABC 7 News. Chamash Kiel right over here. This is where we're basically going to focus today. For most, life outside the wire in Afghanistan looks something like this. Not quite primitive, but it is simple, rural, and can feel like you've taken a step back in time. They live off the land here, farming and hunting when the weather permits. Hunting is just for two months. After two months, these people are just jobless. That is a problem for Captain Christopher Brooks, the Bagram Security Zone ground commander. He knows it's in these small villages where this country's future will be decided. Will these faces embrace the coalition and U.S. military efforts, or will they welcome the Taliban insurgents back in? We followed him on this key leader engagement, something he says is as important as actually hunting the Taliban. And I know that um, uh, some, some of your villagers were, were complaining about uh, that their other villages have more jobs than, than yours here. The mission here is to build a rapport with the elder and the people. 
Captain Brooks wants to establish what will essentially be a job training program for the village men. Many are uneducated and illiterate. Uh, what I intend to do is focus on, you know, the systems. Um, right. That's what really will get things going because a building's a building. Right. So but getting them <clears throat> knowledge to how to be a plumber or an electrician or whatever that that, that, that could that could work. It's it's a matter of how do we implement these these things to improve their way of life. And that, he believes, will keep the Taliban out. I'm told this is a fairly typical small Afghan village. The families tend to be very large, so there are a lot of children, and having a bunch of soldiers in town is a pretty big deal. In fact, the kids swarm the soldiers. Private Tim Audet, a father of two-year-old twin boys, looks at this as a chance at furthering the mission by winning over the young people. The future generation, so hopefully, you know, when they're older, they think, you know, Americans were nice, they helped us out, and created a good relationship with them. The meeting ends with a handshake and an invitation to return for dinner. Right. Take care. A small step forward on the long road to building a better, safer Afghanistan. On patrol with the U.S. Army in Jema Shaquille, Afghanistan, Chris Van Cleve, ABC 7 News. Welcome to counter IED training. Maybe I can tell you all something that will save your lives. And Private First Class Conan Nettles is listening. He's half a world away from his family and fiance back in Germantown. He arrived in Afghanistan just three days ago for his very first deployment. Anything in their imagination could be used to uh, against us. These soldiers are walking a course designed to show them death could be one wrong step away. What do you think your chances are of seeing that wire? You're not going to see it. This terrain is full of dummy IEDs based on the devices insurgents are using against U.S. troops right now. Your main emplacement is right to the right of Sergeant Kirschbaum's foot. Right there. So when the thing explodes, it takes both of us out. The course instructor is Master Sergeant Brian Key. Few know more about insurgent IEDs than this man. Look at this alternator wire right here. Very thin, you can hardly see the wire, right? That's why they like to use it. Improvised explosive devices are the Afghan insurgents' number one weapon of choice, killing 319 coalition troops last year, wounding more than 1,800 others. And I kind of like got the goosebumps, like, oh no, we really are here. On these boards, some of the insurgents' favorites, something as simple as an alarm clock shaped like a mosque. I mean, they can make these things out of, out of anything, you know, out of Coke cans, out of trash that we leave. You see a rocket where? Right there. 107 millimeter round in a collet wall. Does the course, do you think, save lives? Absolutely. It, it does. We've had, a, we've had a lot of people that's come to us and said we used what we were taught, we were able to identify the IEDs, and it saved our lives. The key to all of this is situational awareness, noticing things that don't seem right, like where the ground is disturbed. Right here is an IED. You definitely need to be have your eyes peeled a little bit better. But you almost stepped on one of them. Right. <laughs> because you know, there's just a little wire sticking out of the ground, so you can't really see that. For these soldiers, right it's the last chance to make a mistake. After this course, it's the real thing. This is game on. You know, you practice how you play. If you don't do it in practice, when you get in the game, you're going to mess up. For Private First Class Nettles, with so much waiting for him back in Germantown, this game of life and death is one he has no intention of messing up. At Bagram Airfield, Afghanistan, Chris Van Cleve, ABC 7 News. These 14 insurgents attacked a forward operating base in Afghanistan, but the Apache helicopters capturing this video cannot open fire. As you'll hear, the bad guys are too close to Afghan homes known as Kalats. The video underscores the extra effort to avoid civilian casualties. That's far enough away. Only now do the pilots get the green light. We understand that uh, one bomb in the wrong place can uh, undo the good that a thousand bombs in the right place uh, could have done. 
F-15 and F-16 fighters take off from Bagram Airfield around the clock, flying cover missions for ground troops. In this video, a group of insurgents are in a valley, away from civilians and coalition forces. The F-15 can attack, but only after the commander on the ground asks for it. That shouldn't surprise you that an F-16 has plenty of weapons on board, but what they're finding, often the most effective weapon on this aircraft isn't really a weapon at all, it's the camera that's right there. Originally designed to help pilots aim bombs, now they use this camera to spot and track the enemy. In cases like this, where you can see the insurgents with an assault weapon positioning for a possible ambush, simply hearing and seeing the F-16 sends them running for cover. Ambush averted without a shot being fired. The majority of the time, that's enough to let them know, hey, we're here, we know what you're doing, we see you. Uh, today is probably not a good day. And if the insurgents still don't get the message, this one's pretty clear. Shoot again. At Bagram Airfield, Afghanistan, Chris Van Cleve, ABC 7 News.